Deja vu all over again. We just broke another gas record. Now $4.91 a gallon on average for regular unleaded. That's up just a nickel overnight. A quarter of the country, as you see in this map, now seeing gasoline more than $5 a gallon. Economist Steve Moore says, President Biden, you own it. This is a, a result of um, policies that were implemented. These are self-inflicted wounds. They're not a result of COVID. In fact, because COVID's basically over, we should be seeing less inflation, better growth. President Biden is insisting he's taking gas prices and inflation very seriously. But as Americans are getting crushed by it all, he's now changed his tune. He wants to talk about solar power. Yeah, because you've got one of those in your backyard. Yesterday, he invoked the Defense Production Act to spur domestic manufacturing of solar panels and clean energy technologies. The Wall Street Journal with this warning. The DPA is becoming Mr. Biden's household economic remedy. The constitutional risk is the president will increasingly resort to emergency powers to deputize private industry to do his political bidding. The economic risk is that the government will misallocate resources and make the U.S. economy even less competitive. In Focus Now, RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel. Great to have you in Focus. Those are some dire warnings from the Wall Street Journal. What do you make of it? I think it's it's right on target when you look at Biden saying we're going to import solar panels from China instead of tapping our domestic energy production, which we know we have the capacity to end this crisis that the American people are dealing with. We know that everything Joe Biden has done is intentional. He cut off this Keystone pipeline. He cut off drilling on federal lands. He did it intentionally. The American people are suffering. This is his plan. This is deliberate. He does not care. It is part of the progressive uh, roadmap to a new America, and the American people are paying the price. It is a Green New Deal. It's just all of our green is paying for it through our dollars. Uh, you know, just real quickly on this next one, at the RNC, you're looking at the big picture of the midterm election, so on and so forth. But some of it has to be more than just messaging. What can Republicans do? Because we can't just sit here for the next year, two years, and lame duck when the red wave eventually hits the Democrats and it doesn't appear anything's going to slow it down. Well, winning back the House and the Senate is huge because then it's a message to the Democrats that the American people want to shift. They want to see the Biden administration course correct. And that's the best way you send a message to them that they're off track is by switching leadership. And we saw it with Bill Clinton in his mm -hmm. midterm, and we saw him course correct. Biden, despite all the pain he's seeing with the American people, actually he's not seeing it because he's in Delaware every weekend. He doesn't want to go visit and talk to people. But when you look at the border, you look at the drug crisis, you look at what's happening with our kids as an aftermath of the pandemic with suicide rates and mental health issues, then you look at gas prices and inflation. We have a whole country that's hurting on top of the formula issue. And Joe Biden has decided to ignore it and say it's not a problem. Everything's fine here. Everything's going well. Well, the best way to fix it is elect Republicans. Get out and put Republicans in charge of the Senate and the House. It's the best way to send a message to Biden that he's failing the American people. President Biden reportedly is very angry over his dismal poll numbers as Americans are facing so many crises. And Politico with this headline on Sunday, Biden wants to get out more, seething that his standing is worse now than Trump's. Okay, let's pray that's not really his priority. It goes on to report, quote, Biden also recently erupted over being kept out of the loop on the baby formula shortage. As you might expect, a White House spokesperson calls the report divorced from reality. But critics have had it. A new op-ed headlined, exasperated Biden has only himself to blame as poll numbers sink below Trump's. Chairwoman. Well, I think it's funny that Biden wants to get out and that his priority is his poll numbers. I think that's incredibly shameful as people are really suffering. I know my brother can't find formula for my nephew in Texas. I know we're all struggling with gas prices across the country. People are wondering how they're going to make ends meet. But Biden's worried about his poll numbers. But the real issue, Harris, is who's going to want to be seen with him? 
What Democrat right now wants to campaign with Joe Biden? Nobody in his party wants to be around him. So I don't know where he's going to go. Maybe that's why he has to go to Delaware every week, every weekend, because nobody in his party wants to be seen with a president that's failed this country, that's turned America into, into a disaster in less than two years. You know, the Reagan line, are you better off than you were four years ago? Every American in November is going to say, am I better off than I was two years ago when Joe Biden took office? Mm. And the answer across the board, through every poll, through everything we're seeing, is a resounding no. Wow. From four to two. And that really means something, because these were supposed to be the better months and years coming out of some of the worst months and years that this country's seen under the coronavirus pandemic. One last quick question for you, because I know fundraising is something that, that both political parties are talking about. But it's also, as you've taught me in the past, an opportunity to do some door knocking. What are people saying to you? You know, I hear this, the same three things all the time. Really co concerned. I mean, there's true angst out there. It's sad that we have a president and vice president that won't go talk to the American people like you just did on your show. People are concerned about gas prices. They're concerned about uh, the grocery store being empty. I will tell you, as a mom, we're still dealing with the aftermath of our kids being out of the classroom for two years mm -hmm. and, and the education that was lost during the pandemic. And then, uh, and then crime is a big issue that we're hearing. This is what we're hearing over and over again across mm -hmm. the country. And I think you're going to hear about that today in California as you've got an important recall in San Francisco on this crime issue. Yeah, my, my goal is to just rack up. We just had voters' voices on. We're having you on. You always give me good information about what people are saying. Those are the best indicators as to how much pressure and enthusiasm we're going to see in November. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being in focus. Great. Great to be with you. Thanks, Harris. Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Cain podcast for full episodes right now.